Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. It's been a while since I made my last one, so I thought I got some free time, coronavirus and all of that stuff, so here we are, we're gonna make another video. Now, as you can tell by the title of today's video, it is gonna be about the GT86, which we're sat in right now, as I've owned it for over a year, which is actually an achievement for me. This is the longest I've ever owned a car. So I thought, what better time to do this kind of video where I talk to you about my experiences with it, what I think of the car, if you should get one, if you're maybe in the market for an 86 FRS BRZ and all of that good stuff. But before we get on into the video, I do have to let you guys know that I have released some new products and a new website over on Defy Worldwide. If you guys don't follow the brand, it's mine and I've spent a lot of time and a lot of effort making this work. Down in the description, there is a link towards the website. Go ahead and check it out. If you want to support me in any way whatsoever, getting something from the website is definitely the number one way to do it. So I'd really appreciate it if you guys went and checked it out. We have five new stickers. We have clothing, we have t-shirts, we have hoodies, we have beanies, and we have a whole brand new website and I'd really appreciate it if those of you guys went down and checked it out. The little link as well will be here. So it's www.defyworldwide. .co.uk. Anyways, shameless plug over. Now we can get on into the video. Now, first thing I do need to do before we start going is I have a couple of orders to send off from Defy. So these need to go to the post office first and I will have to make sure that I'm nice and safe when I do that. Once we do this, then I can get on into waffling and boring you guys for the next half now. So without further ado, let's go. Right, there we go, we're at the post office. I'm gonna go send off these Defy Worldwide orders to these lovely customers that support me and my business, and then we can get cracking with today's topic. Right, everyone's orders are off. They're on the way to the customers. Uh, once again, all of you guys who have ordered through the Defy Worldwide store, thank you all so much. It really does mean a lot that you're supporting the brand and you're following the movement to do everything for yourself. It means a lot to me that there are other people out there that think like myself. So. On to the topic. Okay, so for those of you that don't know very much about this car, I bought this car on the 11th of May last year. So it's been just over a year since I've had this car now. And I got it from Players Cars up in Leeds. Once again, massive shout out to them. They sort me out a really good deal on this car. It is on HP, so it means that I am paying monthly installments up until I own the car. Now, I'll go through the ins and outs of the price of the car, how much I'm paying and all that good stuff a little bit later on if you guys uh, want to get a bit of an insight into how much I was paying back then. But I will first talk about why I chose the 86. So my original idea for the 86 was I wanted to do mad modifications to it. You see the videos online, you see the people in America and Japan, they do crazy stuff to these cars. It's a very good base platform and the car does have a lot of potential if you have deep pockets. Now the one thing I didn't quite take into account was the fact that I didn't have deep pocket. I don't have deep pockets. Um, so. That is why the car is still more or less standard. It's why I only have an exhaust, uh, some lights, and a, and a, and a cool gear knob. Uh, because the rest of the stuff for this car is, is very expensive. Uh, very, very expensive. But that wasn't the only reason I chose to buy the GT86. The other reason was actually because it is a pure driver's car. There's not very many cars that are made nowadays that are like this, you know, naturally aspirated. Not that much power, don't get me wrong. There's, you know, it could have more power, 100%. But it's more about the actual driving of the car and what you actually get out of you know, thrashing this car down a B-road. Like no other manufacturer really makes this kind of car where it's, uh, you know, it's a very driver focused, very back to basics car. So that kind of enticed me into it as well. I thought, you know, I do like my MX-5s. I like those kind of cars that are just nice and basic and you can just rag them around. They're reliable. Well, I mean, this car was supposed to be reliable. Now other cars that I were looking at were around the similar price range. So this car in total, including all of the interest and stuff like that was around 14,000 pounds. It's a 2013 Model 86. Um, and it has most of the features, not every feature. It doesn't have heated seats or leathers, but it has every other feature. It has the, you know, the navigation, it has cruise control, it has xenon lights, it has all that other stuff. Now, in terms of monthly payments, I am paying at the moment 284 pounds per month on a HP scheme. 
Um, and then right at the end of that, which is a five year deal, I will completely own the car and it will be mine. I'll have to pay nothing else on it. Now while we're on the talk of money as well, I might as well tell you guys my insurance, because I know I'm probably, I, I do get quite a lot of questions about insurance. Uh, at the moment on this car, I am paying 1500 pound per year to insure the 86, which to me isn't too bad. I only have two years no claims because I've messed around with cars. As you guys, if you follow me from the old channel, you know that I went through cars every three days um, and that really did mess with my insurance. So I got quite lucky with 1500 pounds. I'm not gonna lie, I took it, I was happy with it. They're the financial kind of sides of things. Now actually to get on into, you know, what I think this car is like after a year of owning it. Why, you know, would I recommend it to someone else that is in the market for an 86? So if you're in the market to get yourself a G86 or, or a BRZ even, um, I would say definitely go out and drive one because that is kind of what made me decide to get one. I was going out, I was looking at cars, I was on Auto Trader, as everyone always goes, you know, they go on Auto Trader, they have a look at prices, they have a look at cars. But I went a step further, I was like, no, I need to go and drive a car and see if I actually like it because it was getting to the point where I was going through cars every six seconds and I needed to choose a car that I could stick with. And in order to make that decision, I needed to actually drive it and get a feel for the car to see if I was gonna enjoy it. So I went out to a place that was near me, it was up in Woking and I drove the car, I instantly fell in love with it. I had no power, no torque, but for some reason it was really fun to drive. It's, it's very hard to explain, especially around corners. This thing sticks to corners like pretty much no other car I've driven. Um, especially with the, the lack of electronics that it actually does have, especially if you turn traction control off. Um, it does stick to corners very, very well, and it kind of flows a lot better than other cars. So I can give you a perfect example, which was my Golf R. That car had, at the end of it, about 360 brake horsepower. Uh, so it's a, it a fairly fast, fairly quick car, and you know they handle very, very well Golf Rs. They're really, really well-made cars. But when you go around corners, you're booting it, you've got to slow down, keep booting it, slow down. You can't flow through the corners because the car has almost too much power for you know tight bends and, and technical corners. Whereas when this car goes around corners, because it has no power, it's actually kind of a, kind of a good thing because you can flow around the corners at any speed you want and you don't have to slow down, you don't have to brake, you can just keep going round and round and that is something that I've only really ever experienced in an MX-5 as opposed to this car. Now in terms of all the other things, in terms of you know drivability, comfortability, uh, practicality, uh, fuel and stuff like that. So the fuel, I do probably 20 pounds every, I'd say three days at the moment, maybe four days. I can stretch it out depending on how much I drive, but it doesn't drink that much petrol. It's fairly conservative uh, for a sports car. In terms of practicality, if you guys saw my exhaust install video, you can fit an entire Nvidia exhaust in the car. You do have to put it through the boot, down the seats, and then into the cabin, but you can do it. Like, it's not like there's no space in the car. There is space in the boot, and there's, there's well, there's space for two sandbags in the back seats. They're definitely not for people. Um, but if you wanted to put maybe your shopping in the back, or you wanted to put, you know, a small child in there, or whatever you wanted to do, you could probably do it. Uh, and in terms of drivability, obviously I'm running standard suspension, standard wheels, so it is... Uh, I'll probably get the most, you know, I, I can give you the most unbiased review because there's no modifications done. This is probably how you would buy it. And I can safely say that it's not really that bad. The, the suspension is a tiny bit firmer than your average car, but that is because it is supposed to be a sports car. That's what you would expect. I suppose the question that I can ask myself to answer this question best for those of you that are looking into getting one is, would I, having driven this, buy another one? Would I buy another 86? Uh, the, que the answer to that question would probably be no. It just doesn't tick all the boxes for me, and for the price of the car, uh, although I've definitely overpaid for mine, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm losing a lot because they're depreciating. Even the price they are now, I just feel like there's better cars out there for the money. You know, I'm an old school Jap guy. I like my old cars, so when you look at one of these for about 10 grand, which is, you know, about well, it's quite a modest price for one of these, you can pick up uh, an S15, a 33, an S14, a PS13, a Chaser. I could go on forever. There's so many Jap cars that you can buy for the same price of this. And yes, they might not be as reliable and they might not be in as, as good condition, uh, but I can guarantee you that you probably have more fun in them. Speaking about things that I like and dislike about this car, like pros and cons, one thing that I love about this car is the exhaust. Um, and that's because of my exhaust that I put on. The standard exhaust sucks. You definitely want to get that changed as soon as possible. That was the first thing that I did on this car. But the NVIDIA M1 exhaust, which is the catback I have on, absolutely amazing. I love it. It's not as loud as I want it to be, but the, the, 
the sound that you get and the tone that you get from the car is just right. Obviously another thing that I like about these cars is their handling capabilities, even on standard wheels. Uh, with I've got Michelin Pilot Sport 4s, which aren't the best tyres, you know, they're, they're okay, they're medium-ish tyres, uh, but they're on these tiny Prius wheels. Um, going around corners is a breeze, but you can also have a lot of fun. You can push the car to its limit. You can play around with it, essentially. You can play around the back end, you can swerve it out, you can skid it, but it won't try and kill you. So that's another thing I do really like about this car. Another thing is the interior. I really like it. Some people don't. I suppose it's a bit marmite -y. Some people think it looks cheap. I think it's just that perfect mix of modern and retro all mixed into one. It's got a lovely digi dash up front uh, with a digital speedometer on it and you know a proper speedometer and all the dials. They're all lighting up red and orange, which is really nice. I think that's a really nice thing. The seats are nice and comfy. They definitely hug you in as well. When you go around corners, you don't really tend to sway about that much. It does definitely hold you in nice and tight. Another thing I absolutely love is the look of the outside of the car. This is one of the nicer cars I think Toyota have made in terms of looks, 100%. Um, I just think they got the styling just right. It's just the right size, it has just the right lines, uh, and it all just fits and flows in nicely. I really do like the way that Toyota have done this car. Um, and that is what initially drove me towards actually getting this car, was just the look of GX6s, especially when they're modified. They look so good. I suppose it's time to get on into the things that I don't really like about this car. So number one thing I don't like, obviously, is the power has 197 brake horsepower standard, 150 newton meters of torque. Well, that's definitely one gripe I have with this car is the power, it's, it's, it's not that great. Um, you know, everyone that's driven these probably says exactly the same thing. Unless it's your first car, you're gonna feel there is little to no power and it's, it's because of the lack of torque that this car has. Number two thing that I don't like is the sound system. It's mainly to do with the head unit in these cars. If you have one and you think the sound system sucks too, the speakers are actually not that bad. It's the head unit, it's the, it's the, it's the center console bit. That sucks. Really doesn't handle sound very well. Um, obviously it doesn't amplify sound very well. So if again, I was gonna keep this car for like another year, I would have already changed this head unit for a nice, you know, Pioneer double din or something like that. Another thing I don't like about this car, and it's, it's kind of controversial to my other point that I made about liking the interior, is although I do like the look of the interior, the quality, the build quality of the interior isn't that great. Everything creaks, makes noises, like even my seat makes weird creaky noises now. All the door cards squeak and rattle when you're driving. Uh, the speaker holders, they all rattle in, inside the door card rattles. Um, and it just feels kind of cheap. Another thing I really don't like about this platform is the price of modifications. I didn't think about looking up the prices of modifications before I went to buy this car. And if I did, I probably wouldn't have bought this car. So if I wanted to give you a nice example, we're gonna go down a nice lane here so I can see if I can uh, hit some B-road real quick, see what happens. I'll give you a quick example. My exhaust was around 750 pounds for a catback. Uh, that was imported from the USA. Yeah, imported from the USA. Now, that's not a bad price for an exhaust. That's about a going rate for a, for a car of this size. It's when you look at the manifold. Now, because this car's a boxer, both sides of the exhaust manifold are very, very bendy. And because they're very bendy, they use more metal. Because they use more metal, they're more expensive. So, for example, to get a nice manifold for this car, like an unequal length header, so you make it sound like a proper Subaru, um, you're looking at easy eight, 900 to a thousand pound for just the manifold. Actually, I'm gonna try and shut up and go around this leg. See if I can unlock reason why I bought this car. Now I've owned it just over a year. Now I have, you know, I've had time to really settle in with the car and 
bond with it. What am I going to do? Well, in true me fashion, I am going to get rid of it. But it's not because I'm lusting after another car or anything like that. It's just because I want to change. And I feel like my, my time with this car has almost come to an end. I've done what I wanted to do with it. But anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for my one year review of the 86. What I think about it so far, what I have planned for it, and whether you should get one coming from someone that's owned it for just over a year. Hopefully you did enjoy the video. If you did, make sure to give it a like, make sure to subscribe, click the little bell notification for my upload next year. Um, no, I will try and upload a little bit more consistently. Uh, it's just finding content. I, you know, I have a car that's basically standard. I can't afford to modify it that much anyway to make it interesting. Uh, it's very hard to make decent content. So if you have any suggestions for videos that you think I can make and that you would enjoy watching, then definitely leave them down below in the comments. Thank you very much for watching the video. I'll catch you in the next one.